Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. In the preceding section, I showed you how to add a custom field, in our case, a RAG status field, and how to manually enter values into that field for the tasks in this particular project, the Northern Farm Foods website project. Now, when it comes to using custom fields, there may well be situations where you set up a custom field where values are entered manually. But as I pointed out earlier, quite often you may want to automate the calculation of values for a custom field. So what we're going to do in this section is to introduce a second custom field. I'm going to stick with the idea of a RAG status field, but this time the values in that field are going to be calculated. Now, as I pointed out in the preceding section, there are many ways that people calculate RAG status. It can be based on time performance, cost performance, etc. But the way I'm going to do it in this section is to calculate RAG status purely on the basis of cost. So what I've done is to move the whole project forward a little bit. The project's not been going particularly well. Everything was behind schedule in the version that you saw in the preceding section, that's the version here, but I'm now going to move it on to a later stage where we've reflected the fact that things aren't going too well by extending some of the durations of the task to make them more realistic, in line with what's actually happening. And the version of the project that you're going to see now, quite a few of the tasks have had their durations extended. So this is version two. Note that you can see the custom rag status column there to the right of the task name in the table. Now, as I said just now, I'm going to base calculation of rag status, the new rag status on cost. So what I've done here is to apply the cost table. And remember, you can access those from the tables drop down and just select cost from the list. And if you note in particular, if you look at the variance column, so if I drag this over slightly, this one just here, that quite a few of the tasks now have a positive variance. For example, they're currently running over budget, which I think in every case in the update that I've done is because the task has had to be extended and therefore the cost of the resources on the task has increased. Now, if you look at task five, you'll see that the variance is just over $2,000 for that task. Task 10, the variance is just under $1,000. And there are a couple of other variances as well. So for instance, task 14 has a small variance of plus $90. Now what we're going to do is to calculate RAG status automatically based on cost variance. And the rule that I'm going to apply is that anything that has a cost variance of zero or less, so i.e. the currently planned cost doesn't exceed the baseline cost, any of those tasks, the RAG status will be G or green. For any task whose cost variance is positive but doesn't exceed $1,000, the status is going to be A or amber. And for all other tasks, so tasks where the cost variance exceeds $1,000, the RAG status will be R for red. So let's see how this is set up, this automatically calculated custom field. So let's set up this second custom field. I'm gonna go up to the project tab, custom fields, and this time I'm going to select task two, and I'm going to rename that to RAG Auto just to distinguish it from the existing RAG custom field. Note that on this occasion, I'm not going to use a lookup, I'm going to use a formula. So any existing data in the RAG auto field will be discarded as all values will now be calculated by the formula. Now, this is an important point. If you already had values in that field, as soon as you started to look at them, maybe try to enter values for your new field, you'd see them there and you'd be aware that there was maybe a conflict. But with a custom field whose value is calculated using a formula, you can easily overwrite existing values in the field, in this case, the text to field, without realizing that that's what you're doing. 
So this is a little bit of a warning. If there's anything in text two already, it's going to be overwritten by the values generated by the use of the formula. Now I don't have anything I need in text two, so I can proceed with entering in my formula into the dialog box. So this dialog works in pretty much the same way that uh, Microsoft expression builders and formula builders generally work. You have a set of buttons that let you do things like mathematical functions. You can also do text functions and you have various kinds of brackets, uh, inequalities, logical operators and so on. You also have access to all of the fields that are available for a given task in this case. And then you have a whole host of functions. Now I'm going to do this job in a couple of stages and the first stage I'm going to do is to say, let me identify the G's. What would identify a status of G? Well, a status of G would be identified by a cost variance which is zero or negative. So I need to do an element of testing something or comparing something. So let's click on the function button and look down at the categories of functions. Now the sort of function that I need to begin with comes in the category general and it's an if function. Now the way this if works is I specify an expression. If the expression is true, I do whatever it says in the true part. If it's false, I do whatever it says in the false part. Now the expression I need is a comparison between the cost variance and zero. So what I need to do is if the cost variance is less than or equal to zero, I want the value of rag auto to be green, G. Otherwise, I want it to be either A or R. Now I'm going to deal with the either A or R part in the second stage of building up this formula. So I'm just going to deal with the G part first. So the first thing I need is my expression. So I'm just going to delete out where it says expression. Now my expression is if, now what's the cost variance called? Well, if I go to my field drop down and go to cost, you see I have an option in here for cost variance. So what I want to say here is if the cost variance is greater than zero, what do I want to do if that's true? Well, if it's true, it's going to be R or A. Now I still need to do that part, so I want to come back to that later. So for the time being, I'm just gonna put in here an X. But if it's false, I want rag status auto to be G. And that's it. That's not a particularly complicated formula. If the cost variance is greater than zero, make rag auto x. If it's not greater than zero, make rag auto g. Now when I click on OK, the formula is checked for correct syntax and the syntax must be correct. You'll often get another warning there reminding you that anything that's currently in the text to field will be overwritten once you implement this formula. Now let me look down at the other options in the custom fields dialog. Do I want to worry about task and group summary rows at the moment? No, not really. Assignment rows? No. What about values to display? Well, I'm going to put that onto data for the moment. And let's click on OK. Now, of course, in my table, I'm not currently showing RAG auto status. So let's insert a column, which we should be used to doing by now. And let's scroll down and select our RAG auto. And as you'll see, for any of the fields where the cost variance is positive, we're getting an X. They're the ones we really need now to sort out. But for the others where the cost variance is zero or negative, we're getting a G. So the first version of the formula is working. Now what we need to do is to implement the second part of the formula. So I'm going to go back into custom fields, make sure rag auto is selected, click on formula and I can edit the existing formula. The existing formula is based on that if statement where we compare cost variance with zero. And if it's true, X says literally the value of rag auto is going to be the letter X. 
and if it's false, the value of rag auto is going to be G. But we can make either the true part or the false part something else altogether. So for instance, instead of making that literally X, we can make it yet another if statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this X value. So I'm just going to highlight it and delete it. And we're going to use another if statement in here. So back to function, general and if. Now our expression, we're still testing against cost variance. So let's delete that out and use our cost variance field. And our test this time is if it's greater than a thousand. If that's true, the result's going to be R. And if it's false, the result will be a. and click on OK to accept that and I can see that the syntax has been accepted and let's click on OK and I can see now that that rag status column has updated we no longer have any X's showing in there it's either G, R or A which is exactly what I wanted so in this section I've showed you how to create a calculated custom field I've got a couple of other things to tell you about these calculations and we're going to take a quick look at graphical indicators in the next section and then I'm going to set you another exercise. So please join me for that.